look, I, I spoke at the uh, Melbourne conference and attended there. I think the real value comes from the rich mix of people that uh, IQPC can attract at these kind of conferences. You've got building owners, you've got building operators, uh, you've got uh, ser um, manufacturers, you've got service providers, you've got consultants and all of those people are actually key to uh, delivering a sustainable uh, refurbishment. Uh, so from a time point of view it's well worth my while coming along um, because Oricon, um, you know, has been involved in the design of um, uh, sustainable refurbishments. There's a lot of experience in that area. So if I want to talk to building owners and, and talk about some of the experiences we've had and to share some of the things we've done, it's an incredibly effective forum to do that. Particularly, I have to say, uh, the, there was a, a workshop yesterday. A very small group of people ran for about um, five hours was myself and another speaker and there was a very strong level of engagement good questions and um, I think anyone who had attended that would have really learnt a lot about um, some good tips from practitioners about um, delivery of sust uh, practical solutions for the delivery of uh, uh, sustainable refurbishments. I think there are um, the key lessons you learn are the, the individual perspectives that people have on particular uh, buildings. Like uh, I like Philip Rue's presentation because he uh, spoke a lot about how you get a large company like SKM to uh, go and um, uh, you know track their carbon emissions and to focus on walking the talk. I thought that was very good. I really enjoyed the uh, presentation from uh, uh, Boulderstone because, you know, uh, the Edmund Barton building is a, a wonderful heritage building and, you know, uh, what Boulderstone and the team have done there is to deliver an excellent result both architecturally and from a um, an outcome point of view, from a, an emissions reduction point of view, and to get those key individual lessons learned to remember that stuff it was good. I thought the talk that was given by Dakin on the um, uh, chillers was great because it sort of uh, showed that, you know, um, if you want to go and achieve high levels of efficiency in chillers, you really have to think about things um, in, in, a, in a lot of detail and he asked some good questions on that. Uh, I thought uh, Dave Clark's conversation up front about um, how a small building owner can make a big difference to both their business and to redu uh, 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 reductions was um, uh, was really good. Um, I thought the Mervac talk was excellent because um, it really showed that a large building uh, um, owner like Mervac, what they're doing in both their resident, their their um, hotels and in the um, uh, office building sector. Uh, some of the practical measures they're putting in place and the decision-making process about how they uh, will spend their money in terms of upgrading their buildings. That's great and that's the kind of key insight that you get. You don't always get people uh, like uh, building owners like Mervec talking in public in a very open way about that kind of process and I think that's the real value that a conference like this can give. That's a very long subject and you'd probably have to come along to my lecture to go and, and hear that. There's, there's multiple things. I mean, I think the starting point is to really understand um, where the, every building will have intrinsic values that are, um, uh, that will help um, the retrofitting process and then there are those things that are, are going to be difficult and it's being able to realize what those values are whether that's the orientation of the building the glazing performance whatever it is is to, to know the things that are work within the building and to, and to equally know the things that are going to have the greatest bang for buck in terms of um, improvements within the building and then what you do is you, there's a, you need to have a fairly rigorous process to understand the building, what are its compliance issues, uh, what um, needs to be done to, um, uh, what investments need to be made because things are about to wear out because uh, um, obsolescence is a wonderful opportunity 
to not do like-for-like -like, uh, replacements, but rather to have the opportunity of um, upgrading a building to uh, substantially improve its energy and water performance. And I think the other thing is, it's trying to identify the things that where you'll get multiple benefits from single pieces of construction. So. Um, by improving the, the lighting to go and uh, improve its efficiency, actually to go and make it more effective for people who are working in the space, to go and um, increase energy efficiency whilst uh, improving indoor air quality. They're the sort of multiple things. So buildings are complex and, and it's hard to give you a quick recipe list on these things here. But if you come along to a conference like this, you certainly go away with some very clear ideas on what you can do to uh, upgrade existing buildings. There's no question in my mind with things like mandatory disclosure, there's going to, uh, um, and plus the new um, uh, government initiatives uh, offering 50% uh, uh, tax um, uh, write-offs on, on energy efficiency. They, I think the government's recognised that uh, buildings are uh, existing buildings um, are a huge opportunity in terms of energy saving and um, there's going to be a lot of focus in, in this area. Mandatory disclosure is really exposing um, the uh, energy performance and any of the large property owners have recognised that and there's a lot of reinvestment at the moment into existing buildings um, which is good. So there's, a, there's going to be a lot of work um, in this space coming through and what's good is I think um, all end areas of the industry are actually gaining from that. The building owners know the kinds of things that will do to go and make a difference. The tenants are demanding um, uh, a um, uh, more sustainable buildings and, and, and defined outcomes, particularly the government. And there are also financing mechanisms coming in place like uh, the City of Melbourne's 1200 Buildings Initiative which enables building owners to um, uh, do the work, get grants from Melbourne City Council and then collect the cost uh, repayments associated with that from the tenant through the rates process. Um, you know, that kind of innovative thinking is coming through. So. Uh, Watch this space, there's going to be a, uh, a lot of work in um, the sustainable refurbishment of existing buildings.